Hey folks, welcome back. So I'm happy you guys liked the Matrix breakdown. Today I'm going to give you another one, which is Spirited Away. But before we get into that, I want to tell you that we are giving away free ebooks every week. So stay tuned to the end of the video to know how to enter. So in this breakdown of Spirited Away, I always like to talk more about theme. So in this case, the themes of the film Spirited Away are coming of age and Studio Ghibli always does environmentalism in their narratives, consumer and greed, identity and memory, and the blurred lines between good and evil, because a lot of characters are not always fully good. So in the beginning of the film, we get into the introduction and we show that the family is moving all their luggage, majority of their luggage are things like that. Sentimental things are in the car and Shihiro, the lead, a 10 year old girl is not having it. You know, she's complaining. She just left her old life. And her family's like, you'll find new friends, et cetera, et cetera, which is kind of like a foreshadowing. She will, if you know the film. So she hears ordinary world is uprooted when her family gets lost on their way to their new house and stumbles upon an abandoned amusement park. Her parents explore the park while she is reluctant to follow and obviously is still unhappy. Now, the inciting incident that sets everything in motion is that usually at the 10 minute mark, 10% mark, whether it's a novel, film, in this case, the film. In this case, her parents turn into pigs. But the lead up to that is she hears parents go to this food stall, this weird, ominous food stall that is creepy. And Shihiro kind of senses it, but her parents are so drawn to this food stall. So Shihiro's parents eat the food meant for the spirits and are transformed into pigs. This serves as the inciting incident as Shihiro is now trapped in this mysterious, magical world filled with spirits and must find her way to survive and rescue her parents. So when we move into new situations, the hero enters a new situation, meeting new people or facing new challenges. And the hero meets Haku on the bridge, this beautiful like arc bridge. And at the end of the bridge is this beautiful castle. So when Chihiro meets Haku, a boy who helps her navigate the strange world, he's like, you know, I thought you were a spirit. He realizes, oh my God, she's human. So he has to hide her from obvious supposed villain who's, there's no one 100% evil in Studio Ghibli films. There's always these underlying things, why people are the way they are. He instructs her to get a job at Yubaba's bathhouse, which is this beautiful castle, to avoid being turned into a spirit or in her case, forgotten. Chihiro enters the spirit world, it's strange, surreal, this crazy environment filled with bizarre characters and different rules and dangers. And she has to hide and survive. She has to formulate a goal. And that's what turning point two is usually. It. And usually that's what turning point two is. The hero formulates a specific outward visible goal. And in this case, Shihiro changes her name. Well, Haku changes her name just to hide her. And he helps her secure the job at the bathhouse by confronting Yobaba which is the witch that runs it. This marks her commitment to the world of spirits. She starts working alongside other workers like Lynn and now must adopt the rules and expectations of the bathhouse while planning on how to save her parents. So she formulates that goal. And usually when the character formulates the goal based upon the inciting incident of the things that were happening and obviously the new situations, all these things, she's like, oh my God, this is a crazy world. So this is my plan now. So with that, we jump into act two. So in act two, we have progress. So you made your goal and now you're diving deep into the story. You got to commit in certain ways. You're not fully there. You're in and out kind of. Usually characters are like, what is this new world? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. So in progress with a new goal and plan, the protagonist struggles to let go of their old life and overcome mounting obstacles. And in this case, Shihiro or Sen, uh, as she works at the bathhouse, Shihiro grows stronger, more mature. She learns the value of hard work, resilience, and compassion. She forms bonds with Haku. She gets to understand him more. She understands Lin and the other spirits and even helps, uh, you know, no face. Actually, not no face. It was another spirit. Appears like her. They celebrate her, as you can see in, in the film. And during this process, Shihiro also uncovers a dark secret of the bathhouse and its residents, you know. And you can deep dive into that whole aspect, but you can see it in the film. But here's the midpoint, usually the point of no return. The protagonist makes a full commitment to their goal. Haku is severely injured after stealing a powerful seal from Yubaba's twin sister, Zenaba. Shihiro embarks on the journey to return the seal to save Haku's life. 
this marks the turning point, which is the midpoint. Like she's committed. She's like she already had the goal of saving her parents, but now she's invested in these new friends or these new acquaintances and she wants to save them. In this case, she wants to save Haku's life by leaving the safety of the bathhouse behind and entering a dangerous new phase of her life. So one of my favorite characters, No Face, follows her on this journey and they're on the train is i like those scenes i really love it's very beautiful very dreamy very sad so from there complications and higher stakes as the characters pursue their new goal returning becomes impossible you know she's fully committed so the journey to zen about shihiro or zen whatever she goes by at that point uh journeys to zenaba's cottage accompanied by no face uh, this intensifies the stakes. Along the way, she learns about Haku's true identity as the river spirit and grows more determined to save him. So the more you learn about your new friends, the more you want to help them. You know, it's it's good. It, it it bonds you to these characters, one, as a viewer, but at the same time, Shihiro's bonded to Haku as well. So she confronts her fears and takes responsibility and shows great emotional strength. She also brings peace to No Face who had been consuming everything and causing chaos and havoc in the bathhouse from before. So once you have that, you fully committed, you're doing these things. There's always a point where everything goes to shit. Like you're happy. You think things are going to progress and everything like that. You name it. Every movie, every film, every TV episode, there's got to be a point just before the last act where all hope is lost. And in this case, a devastating event crushes the hero's hope, causing emotional devastation. And upon returning from Zenobuz, Shihiro must now confront Yobaba, one of the final you know, things she has to do to save her parents. Yobaba challenges her with a difficult test. Shihiro must identify her parents among a group of pigs, you know, in order to, you know, it's like it's one of those games like pick the right thing and then you will get it all. But Chihiro has learned a lot, but it, it still feels like she wants to, you know, as a human being, you, you're like, fuck, I did all these things and I, I thought I was going to make it, but all hope is lost. So usually characters go, they want to go back to their old life. So in previous videos, the Blade Runner main character officer, K, you know, he's like giving up. He doesn't, he realizes that he's not. Deckard's son so he kind of wants to retreat but you've known this new world now you can't go back to your old life you're a different person so when you jump into act three usually that's what happens but in this case the test puts everything on Shihiro and she's everything she's learned she's going to use now so when you then you go to the climax Shihiro passes the test correctly identifying that none of the pigs are her parents this moment of triumph shows her growth and newfound confidence in herself by passing the test saving her parents she has a right to leave the spirit world shihiro reunites with her parents and they obviously transform back into humans however they have no memory of the whole thing now shihiro is more independent she seems different to her parents and so after that climax there's the resolution or the denouement or what do you want to call it just tying loose ends and showing that the heroes fully embrace their new identity and achieving a sense of fulfillment and peace. And Shihiro and her parents return to the ordinary world, though her parents are obviously unaware. Shihiro, however, has been forever changed, which is a good thing. And next videos, I will show different types of endings for different types of characters and character arcs, which is very useful because you don't always want a happy ending or everything's tidy and like loose ends are always solved. It, it doesn't feel satisfying. There's, for me, it always has to be a little bit of mystery at the end. Now coming back to the end of this whole beautiful thing, I'm gonna show you how to enter to win our new story structure ebook. And the beautiful thing about this ebook is it's very straightforward. It's along the lines of what I'm always presenting and teaching. When I was first starting out years and years ago, it was very difficult because I knew all these other elements, but structure was always this weird, daunting thing. When should I do this in part of the story? When should I introduce this? So for this week, comment Spirited Away, and I will choose one person every week from a different video, and I will send you an email and you'll get your free ebook. All right, till next time, peace weirdos.
Also, if you want help in your scripts, your novels, story structures, and everything like that, we do consulting, we do script reviews, we guide, we teach. So check out our website and we will get back to you and help you in any way we can.